What's going on? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Nikhil Sai Show, which is hosted by me, the Nikhil Sai. And guess what's going on today? We are back with another amazing interview. Today we have another two comma club award winner. It's going to be another great podcast. So make sure to stick around. And guess who's the who's the actual guest hopping on the podcast today? This guy's crazy when it comes to financial advising. He's been a financial advisor from almost 16 years. That's the where expertise come from, right? And he started working at a job at different financial institutions. Now actually built more than three seven-figure businesses, helping financial advisors build his own financial firm at a different stage as well. So yeah, let's not waste any time and welcome Mark Knight, CEO at MK Financial Planning. Hey, Mark. Hi, Nikhil. Glad to see you on time, brother. Thank you so much for taking out time today and hopping on this podcast. No worries. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, Mark. But like, like your journey is so crazy. Like, you know, started at a different stage, now helping advisors to make good money, helping multiple people, dozens of people make six figures. Like the impact, the level of impact you're creating on this planet is just amazing. It's truly inspiring. So, Mark, we would love to hear your backstory. Like, how did all of this craziness start? Uh, actually, I've been a financial advisor for almost 30 years, but I've owned my own company for 16. Right. Um, when I first started as a financial advisor, um, mm -hmm. I kind of, I know now, I didn't know then, but funnels are all about uh, sharing your, your niche with your target market and um, ideal clients. And uh, believe it or not, uh, the first job I got in an insurance company, my target market were bus drivers. And so my funnel was the buses. I used to sit on buses all day and drive around <laughs> and just have journeys with the bus drivers, talking about talking to them about their pensions. Wow, that's just amazing. So yeah, it's like 30 years of experience in financial advising space. That's a real expertise, brother. We would love to hear more about that uh, in a second. So let's get into the next question, Mark. So again, you've been into this industry from decades, actually, right? So like you have seen all type of entrepreneurs, business owners, financial advisors who have different type of mindset. And with your core expertise, you understand like what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur at a mindset standpoint, right? So we would love to learn from you, like what do you think is the mindset to be a successful entrepreneur? Like the mindset shift they need to actually grow a business. Um, I think uh, you, you need to have a few um, a few things. You need to be open minded to ideas and suggestions out there. Um, mm -hmm. I think you need need to be ready to learn as well. And I think that comes hand in hand with being open minded. You know, there's so many times I've sat down with my colleagues and other financial advisors, and I've said, um, "This try doing it this way. How does that sound?" And they say, "Well, I always do it like that." And they don't always do it like that because if they always did it like that, they would have the same kind of success that I've had. So uh, the minute that you close your mind to something, you, you're not going to scale and grow. Um, the other things I've learned is that you need to be ready to share what you've got. Uh, it's no good hoarding it and keeping it all to yourself. And the world changes. It's really dynamic. So you need to be able to pivot and move um, with the things that are being thrown at you. Those are my key. Those are my key uh, mindset to success um, attributes, I think. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's amazing, Mark. Like we really see like a lot of people who have that closed mindset. Yeah, you know what? I've done that. And if they had really done that, there wouldn't be the situation to listen to us or you know to talk to us, right? They would be in a different situation. And I really admit the way you're actually articulating the re the need to pivot the businesses because, like, it became like a pre-COVID to post-COVID situation. Like, the, the the business, the way businesses function is just night and day, right? And if you cannot pivot your business in a different model, you're gonna be crashing out. That's just amazing, brother. So, and again, Mark, like we see a lot of financial advisors in this space and any business owners in general, like they really have that, that really, really like a, a burden or, you know, like a mindset issue to actually start charging premium, right? But the way to actually create a higher level impact and to deliver higher level results is you, like when you really start charging high premium, uh, 
premium for your products and services, right? So would you like to tell us more about like how someone like a business owner or a financial advisor can start positioning to charge high ticket for the products and services? Yeah, I think, um, I think you need to understand uh, your niche mm -hmm. uh, and understand how to make uh, somebody go from one step of that niche and marketing to, to their end goal. Uh, being able to listen to people as well is pretty good. I think um, from my point of view, I'm I'm positioned quite strongly as the only financial advisor to, I think, have had, well, you know, I've got three awards, so uh, three two comma club awards. So that's, that's mm -hmm. pretty strong, the fact that I've been able to replicate the, the success using different um, models. Um, and so I, I think I think that's key. I think that's that's really important yeah absolutely like once you really understand who they are serving now they can actually start with the exact audience and use the right messaging and the messaging is the key for positioning that's really great mark thank you so much for the kind answers so let's get to the next question mark so as you are into this financial advisor space from a long time like you kind of know what 99 percent of the usual day-to-day -day people don't know which is the strategy to build a real wealth would you like to talk like in a brief way like what is a strategy to build a real wealth because you've seen people who make six figure years but in the end they don't even have a couple thousand bucks in the bank account right like they really just blow it up that way so would you like to tell us a strategy to build some real wealth yeah i think um obviously you, you... To, to do most of the things in in marketing, you need to spend time to understand what it is you're doing. So I think when I started off my own financial advice company in 2005, mm -hmm. um, I paid for a nice, bright, sparkly new website to be built for me, thinking that as soon as I press the trigger and, and press go, that I'd get lots of clients coming into me. But the website was my ego. It was all about me. It wasn't about what I could do for the clients. And uh, I didn't get any calls. As soon as I <laughs> so I sat there for about a week, I think, and realized that it wasn't working. You know, I, I even paid some money to Google ads. I had Google ads coming to, uh, you know, uh, paying for Google ads to come to my normal website. It, it just failed. It, it failed big time at the first hur hurdle. So I then sat down and spent three months uh, researching um, how, how, to you, how to get online marketing to work to get clients to come to you because I didn't want to pick up the phone and cold call. I didn't want to go out and get um, do networking. It was my worst nightmare. I didn't want to um, go and try and get referrals from clients. Uh, that I was getting is because that's just cringeworthy. It didn't work very well. So um, there were there were loads of people out there uh, who, who were doing online marketing back then. This was the early stages of online marketing, um, where um, you had uh, a, like a one-page website that probably took you twenty minutes to read to get to the bottom to the offer, that type of thing. Um, so three months researching that. Um, mm -hmm. then I had to think about the risk side of it. So could I afford three months of not getting any business in to study something to, to get to the end result? So, so that was my risk analysis with that. And I realized actually that I thought, it, you know, I've, I've got savings behind me. If this works in three months time, I'm going to be able to replenish those savings quite quickly. Um, the other thing I think is really important is to uh, spot uh, opportunities and not just spot them, but also grab them and run with them. Because for a long time, I've thought this, there's three things that you can do when opportunities come your way. One mm -hmm. is that you can see it as an opportunity, grab it and embrace it and work with it. You can spot the, ident uh, spot the opportunity and just watch it fly past you and just ignore it, not take it. Or you can just miss it. So the opportunity comes to you. You don't even see it as an opportunity. And it just goes, I don't know which one of those two last ones are the worst ones. But uh, spotting opportunities and grabbing them, um, that's, that's always worked well for me. Let's put it that way. 
Yeah. And I think the, the final thing for me, Nickel, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, the day I realized I, I, I needed a business coach um, was the day it was like a like a light you know, pinging off in my head. Um, and I got the business coach and, and within months we were working on a plan for me to sell up my company and and pivot and and start coaching other people to, uh, to get the same kind of impact that I've had in my life with other people. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that, yeah, that's that, my strategies to building real wealth. Absolutely, Mark. And yeah, like people really need to admit, right? Like they really need to admit what's going on. And they definitely have that self ego as an entrepreneur that they just want to showcase themselves as a business. But it's more about showcasing what you can do to your clients because that like nobody really cares who we are until we can help them actually right so we really need to come uh, from that standpoint and i absolutely agree on the point being which you said is hiring a real coach who can actually help you there's a lot of noise in the world with the overloaded of information we get into this analysis paralysis like we do 100 different things at a time put a lot of things on the table which may not work in the end but if we have like a coach i think they can help us to craft an action plan to help us scale in a predictable way saving thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars into costly mistakes that's awesome mark thank you so much for amazing story so let's get into the next question mark like i wonder i really wonder i really admit like how did you actually scale multiple businesses to over seven figures like mm. how did you actually do it like people are struggling to make like they're stuck at the level where they're actually struggling to make a consistent five-figure business but you have built multiple seven-figure businesses so we would like to learn what it actually takes to build that real businesses yeah, really good, really good question. Um, what I would say is that uh, for me, it was all about, um, it, it's a bit like an art, like a craft. And to be good at doing something, you need to, to understand it and practice it and keep going at it. Um, and so, you know, I go onto the ClickFunnels, uh, ClickFunnels official uh, Facebook page, and I see lots of people who aren't prepared to put that kind of effort in and they're, they're looking for, you know, the pill, the pill, the magic pill that will give them the answer to all of that. There is, there is not a magic pill out there. There's uh, hard work, study and effort. And when you put these things together, I think, um, I think it works well. So the things that worked for me, <clears throat> I already mm -hmm. told you that in the first, in the first real three months of my business, I didn't do very much except uh, study the art of marketing to get clients to come to me. Um, and uh, and then this was like this was full time um, um, Monday through to Sunday. Most days I was doing it, studying what, what I could do. And there's there's so much stuff out there that it was easy to, to immerse yourself. And there still is so much stuff out there. So um, I, what I didn't say was when I employed my business coach, um, mm -hmm. he asked me what what is it I wanted to do with him, and I said jokingly, um, I just want to work two days a week, and he said, okay, fine, let's do that. So I was kind of shocked that he, as a business coach, he thought that he could work it so that I only worked two days a week in a business that employed twenty staff. It, didn't make a lot of sense but for two years we spent doing that and it was during that time I thought actually um, and, and we'd also laid out plans for my eventual sale of the company as well um, and I knew that uh, after that I wanted to start coaching and helping other people uh, financial advisors mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know and other people in different niches as well get get success so I thought uh, what better way than to create as many um, uh, as many two comma club awards as possible. That will give me some credibility, at least within the funnel world. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and so I, I I spent three years immersed again uh, on the three days a week I wasn't working, immersed in in how to create uh, funnels, uh, proper funnels. The, the the websites I was using previously weren't really funnels; they were one page uh, sites. So I spot they were. I call them pretend funnels. I think I get away with that phrase, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So uh -huh. I just I just spent three years 
studying how to create funnels. And I um, I went to Funnel Hacking Live. I interviewed over 50 Two Comma Club award winners. Um, I, I did the One Funnel Away Challenge several times. Um, and then I think the final piece of the jigsaw actually was when I took the uh, Russell's, uh, Russell Brunson's perfect webinar script and turned it into a 10 to 12 minute uh, VSL. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when I, and I got, yeah, I got two, two of my awards on the back of, uh, on the back of that. Wow, so that's what I did. Wow. Study, study was my first thing. The next thing, of course, is test and measure. So whatever you do, you need to test and measure to see whether it's working. And if it's not working, you need to tweak it until you get it as close to perfect as possible. I, don't, I wouldn't say anything uh, is perfect. Um, and then I also used the money that I was making, at least some of it, to generate mm -hmm. uh, uh, adverts, reinvest in the marketing to test and measure and then finally now i know i i do a lot of orga organic marketing and mm -hmm. i probably if i was going to start from scratch uh organic marketing would be would would be the way to go absolutely mark i think that's really like a blueprint for people who are actually starting a business right and the way you articulated the story on how we have pivoted multiple businesses and people really admitted like i've like we see common business owners to work like they think they work like hell right they be like oh i work 18 hours a day but i'm like oh are you measuring what you're working on are, are you checking out the output right but they didn't they didn't really see like what's coming out of their work right and that's just really like an amazing amazing uh, lesson to the people who are actually wanting to scale their business and you literally like explain how did you do it that's pretty awesome mark thank you so much for golden nuggets so let's get to the next question mark we see a lot of not just financial advisors but business owners making common silly mistakes which they don't even admit themselves main problem is ego right would you like to mention like the most common mistakes made by financial advisors and other business owners while they're working on their company growing it marketing funnels and all yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, and so I work a lot with financial advisors, and I've I've been around financial advisors for a long time. But in the last three years of my research, uh, I came outside of the financial advisor world quite quite a lot. So I did see the same, the, the exact same things ac across the spectrum. So it's not. So my comments now aren't just about financial advisors. It's it's just what I saw out there. Ego is a big thing. Um, and um, that's kind of hand in hand with being closed minded as well, thinking, I know it all. Many people don't know it all. Um, being in your comfort zone, I think, was, was also a big problem for me. I think that's why I knew I needed to get um, a business coach in the first place, because I was I was so comfortable um, cruising along and um, although I, uh, I didn't uh, at that point in time, I still worked five days a week, um, but I took off as much time as I wanted and I didn't go in till 10 o'clock in the morning. And I, I probably left at about four o'clock in the afternoon. So it, it, I was just cruising. And, and I think comfort zone is, is a is a big issue for a lot of people. Um, not understanding how to deal with problems as well was um, was something I noticed quite a lot. Um, and so uh, to give you an example, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people I talk to, uh, they're, they're just, uh, they're just solo preneurs. Let's call them that they, it's just them in their business. They're happy where they are with the, with the income that they've got. And they're happy with the level of clients that they've got. And so they're in their comfort zone and they know that if they, if they push to come outside of that comfort, comfort zone, there's going to be some problems that they need to overcome. So maybe they need to employ some staff. Maybe they need to do some advertising. And it's just things that they, it's problems that they don't know how to solve and they don't know how to find out how to solve. So um, some I heard somebody say, I can't remember who it was, um, but the I think it might have been Dan Henry said something like, um, mm -hmm. The more problems you overcome, the more likely you'll become an, a, a millionaire. Um, that that type of thing. So uh, I welcome problems, and I don't see them as problems. I always see them as solutions. So 
Um, but most people don't do that. And I think the minute that you do that, um, you, sh you will start moving forward. So welcome your problems, I think. Uh, the, the other thing I noticed as well, Nikhil, was that pe a lot of people hoard what they've got uh, instead of spending out. So um, uh, so my last business coach cost me 25,000 US dollars. The one before that cost me 50,000 US dollars. And the one before that probably cost me about 100, 150,000 pounds. So Ooh. I could I, I could have kept that money myself and I could have made slow progress, but I decided to pay that money out to get fast progress. Um, and, you know, I've, so I've made multiple millions of pounds on the back of spending out 200 grand on coaching. Um, I, so would I do that again? Yes, I think I probably would do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So I think those are the common mistakes that I, that I see. Absolutely, Mark. And this literally can resonate with like almost everyone in the market, right? Like literally. And just like they need to pick a right coach and they need to invest, right? And and, and I can, like we really see like especially small business owners when they make some chunk of it, they'd be like, oh, I want to buy a nice car. I don't want to spend it. I want to buy a nice home. I don't want to spend it because they are in a scarcity mindset still. They're making money, but they are in the scarcity mindset that, okay, what if this doesn't work? But, you know, really investing on something which makes them worry about it, which, which will push them to work on and make more progress. And the coach will actually push them to do that, which is freaking awesome, Mark. Thank you so much for amazing learnings. And that's just going to help people to understand where they are at and what mistakes they're commonly doing and probably help them pivot. Definitely makes a lot more sense, Mark. Thank you so much for amazing stuff. So, Mark, like you, you are running multiple seven figure businesses like you have so many clients projects things you need to work on in person and uh, your family like you have definitely 100 different things to do every day and you're a productive man by the way because we see that happening day in day out right so we'd love to learn more about like what tools you use to manage your productivity uh, managing your clients and projects and family and everything um so uh, i might surprise you a little bit the first thing is i have my my phone, where is that? Mm -hmm. I'm, I have lots of reminders on it set every, uh, so many times. I've had to silence the phone now because I know that at some point in time, a reminder is going to go off to tell me to, to do something. Um, I try to keep everything in my life as simple as possible because I think we can overcomplicate things very much. So in terms of uh, me coaching people, I tend to use the, the products that are, that, that are inside Google the G, I don't know if you have Google G Suite, G mm -hmm. Suite, put my teeth yeah. in properly. Um, but there's lots of things in there, like uh, similar to Word and Excel and things. So I, cr I create things using that. Um, and uh, I, have, I have a basic CRM. There's a CRM called, I don't know if you've come across it, Less Annoying CRM. Less annoying CRM. Ooh, it's, it's about $7 a month. Yeah, it is. Wow. It's, so, it's so funny. And uh, when I was looking for a CRM, first of all, it came up mm -hmm. quite a lot because they advertise a lot. And I ignored it. I kept ignoring it because it just sounded so terrible. But um, I, I ran um, a, a multi million pound business on the back of it, and it cost $7 a month. It's Ooh. crazy. Yeah, it is. It is like it, it, it's delivering great value for just very low investments, which is freaking awesome. So, yeah, hopefully people learn like what kind of systems use in the back end so that they can actually using like again, guys, in the end, it comes to it comes down to simplicity. We see people who are following crazy stuff, using 100 different tools to do tasks doesn't work out right look at what mod work uh, is doing like he's just running multiple businesses through basic google sheets and reminders that's it no crazy stuff it's awesome mark and and again we would love to learn like your daily routines uh, for your success like do you personally have any routines kind of what you follow day to day um so <clears throat> my routines now are different to my routines years ago It'd be different to a routine of uh, 20 something person i'm sure but um so I, I i do think i take things much much kind of slower now than than i did when i first started my business um and i realized quite quickly that uh 
to be able to to work the way that I wanted to work, I just needed to uh, delegate as much work as possible. So the first thing I do when I get up is I, I do some stretching. Uh, you have to you have to do that as you get a bit older. Um, I do a little bit of reading, um, and then when I start working, I write down all of all of the tasks tasks I need to do that day or or coming mm -hmm. up, and then I look to see which one of those I can delegate to other people to do. Um, so some days I end up not having anything else to do because I've delegated everything out to um, other people. But, um, those are my ideal days and those are the days then I can get on and do interviews with people like yourself or uh, just do 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 some recording some new video content that's, that's pretty I spend awesome. a lot of my time doing um, video content as well oh yeah definitely we see the amazing value you're providing multiple places in your group and stuff like that that's pretty awesome mark and again guys this is just a dream coming true if you look at what's happening with mark again that's just hard work it's not going to happen in the step one. He's in the step 100. So he have built right systems and processes in his business so that Mark can delegate most of his tasks to his team. And, you know, once you really figure that out, that emptiness of an entrepreneur, just like what you're doing, will help you craft ideas and uh, business plans for impacting hundreds of thousands of people in the coming days, right? Like this is very different from the emptiness of people who watch Netflix, right? Definitely something to admit on. Pretty amazing stuff, Mark. Definitely learn a lot of stuff here. So let's get to the next quick question, Mark. You've been doing business from a long time into this um, at least financial advising space for almost 30 years, which is freaking great. So what would be your suggestion to a 20-year-old you or someone who is just getting started right now in 2021? Um, well, so my son is 22, and he started with me uh, working on marketing and stuff when he was about 17 or 18. So kind of yeah. um, I've already helped him a little bit he's still working on his niche but whilst he's doing that he's uh, got a job with a uh, a funnel marketing company so he's still part-time in uh uni as well university so mm -hmm. he's he's doing really really well um Amazing. glad to hear that yeah so i would say um yeah, i'd say start start looking at the niche that you want to work in um things that feel special to you you can then share that special with other people um and immerse yourself and i'm going to say immerse yourself in click funnels now there's lots of software out there um for different types of to, to make funnels mm -hmm. but uh you know, did you have to remember i spent three years research full-on research in terms of uh marketing and funnels and the one company which consistently came up with goodness for me to consume was ClickFunnels. And so, you know, I, I, you know, I see lots of people every now and again saying ClickFunnels costs too much or uh, this product is cheaper or this product does everything else. Well, ClickFunnels made me a multimillionaire. And so if it's done that for me and it's done it for loads of other people, then I don't yeah. care if I can get a slightly less costing product elsewhere click funnels has got so much education it's like a university in itself so True. choose some niches that you want to work in mm -hmm. um immerse mm -hmm. yourself in those and learning those and absorb yourself in click funnels click funnels university maybe russell brunson will see this and he'll create click funnels university if he hasn't already done it <laughs> yeah, like you actually have this cool thing called Funnel Flix, by the way. Like it's similar yeah. to Netflix for entrepreneurs. So they have pretty robust courses. They have sold for thousands of dollars earlier. They have pumped up all the content and, you know, given it access for free to ClickFunnels users. It's just an amazing software. And yeah, we see a lot of people claim like, right, hey, the software is much cheaper and has 100 different options than ClickFunnels, but who needs that? Right? Like, don't complicate it like you just need this basic software and again it's costly for people who don't make money or who don't understand business but it's definitely like i can bet on this but at least fifty thousand people will pay even 500 dollars for the same software monthly no doubt on that part right just because of the community and the type of person russell brunson is it's just a crazy place to be in the software community. That's freaking awesome, Mark. Thank you so much for amazing suggestions. Hope hope that really helps people to get more clarity on the needs they need to work on and the kind of tools they need to be looking at. 
definitely understandable. So let's get to the next question mark. What are your life's biggest achievements so far and any next bigger goals in the coming times? Um, so, I th yeah, obviously my biggest achievements are my wife and my children. So, I mean, that goes without saying. In terms of, in terms of work, living in a space now where I don't have to worry about money uh, in itself is an amazing achievement from a kid who grew up in one of the next to one of the roughest council estates in the UK. I, I would never have anticipated the, the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you about millions of pounds worth of uh, funnel activity. It's, it's just crazy. Um, I think my next goal actually is not so much about me. It's, it's about uh, the impact that I'm going to have uh, uh, on others, uh, my children. Um, and funnels have helped uh, me with everything that I've got. I want to help the funnel community get more by offering them the kind of support that I've had um, uh, as well. Uh, maybe um, help as many people get as much success as they want to get. You know, some people don't want to get, some people don't want or don't need to get a two comma club award. They want to get 500 pounds or dollars a month or 10,000 or 1,000. It doesn't matter. You just, if you have a goal, you just need to um, understand how funnels can help you reach that goal. And, and I can help people do that. Wow. Definitely, definitely, Mark. We see that happening all over, over and over with your clients. That's definitely something people need to consider. And yeah, definitely, like the, like funnel is not just like a software or a tool which you are using here. Funnel is just like a concept, right? Like, don't confuse your customer. Give them clear call to action. Be very focused on your messaging. That's what a funnel is. And take them to a sales process online without confusing them. I think people definitely admit it and implement that in their business. That's awesome, Mark. Let's get to the next question. What was your biggest mistake in life so far? You've been in business from freaking long time, so we'd love to hear what kind of mistakes you have done. So I, <clears throat> I started my uh, financial advisor firm in 2005. Mm -hmm. But in 1998, um, I left a company. I was, I was a financial advisor in a bank. I left the bank to set up a, a company all about will writing and trusts and inheritance and things like that um, and i remember my boss said to me at the time what well, i don't understand why you're doing that i don't understand why you don't set up a financial advisor company and it was the furthest thought from my mind i just couldn't understand why i would want to do that so um so my niche then was uh will writing and making wills for people um mm -hmm. and uh uh, my funnel, let's put it, uh, the, the funnel I was using was the pay slips for the local authorities. So you'd get your pay slip, you'd be able to see how much money you'd made that month. And then there'd be my little advert that said, would you like to make a will or something like that? <clears throat> um, the, the, the problem was, my so my biggest mistake actually was um, not creating my financial advice firm at that point in time, knowing, because I, 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 although I didn't think about niches and marketing and all that kind of thing, I, under, I clearly understood what I was doing because of the success that I've had. Um, I just wish that I'd done what I did five or six or seven years earlier, because then I could have started this journey I'm on now much, you know, five or six years ago. Yeah, true. You would be much more ahead in, in, the, in the business, right? People definitely admit and what they're doing and definitely need to make sure that everything goes well in their business. Great story, Mark. Thank you so much. Amazing. So let's get to the next quick question. We have a few more questions here. So, Mark, who are your main inspiration for success so far and any key people involved in your journey? Um, so I think I have to put uh, a large part of my success down to my first business coach that I got. Um, he actually, he, because I'd been running my company for uh, at that point about 11 years, I didn't know how to stop doing that. Well, I knew that there were, I knew that there were options like I could sell it or I could retire and put somebody in my place. But, um, I also didn't feel I could do that. And so he helped me and he gave me permission that I needed to allow me to, to, to allow me to go on and sell that company. 
and then help me follow my um, new desire to coach and help others. Um, but earlier on in my journey, it was the likes, there were people like Frank Kern, Russell Branson, you know, uh, these were all the people with the long form sales letters on uh, marketing. So th they were my inspiration, I think, on, and how I managed to click, uh, sorry, start my three month lack of clients and start getting clients at the beginning. Wow, wow. That's definitely amazing. Amazing. Hope that people really create a lot more impact just like uh, happened in your life. That's really crazy, Mark. And Mark, you're an amazing person helping people just achieve their financial goals, building out the right funnels in their business. So where can our audience find mm -hmm. your mentoring? Like where they can actually start working with you or learn from you? Yeah. So I've got a Facebook group that uh, I've got that's just for uh, financial advisors. But today... Um, I set up a new group for anybody else outside of the financial advisor industry um, wow. who want to come in. And I'll share my um, as, as I share my tips with the financial advisors, if I think it works in, in the worldwide community, I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. put, I'll put those tips and tricks in there. So, OK, if I share that link with the audience after. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually going to drop the link collected from you and drop the link in the description of the podcast so people can join. So guys, it's a free community with Mark Knight who have built multiple seven figure businesses, helping you with the right knowledge so that you can shortcut your way to reach your goal without confusing yourself and without getting information overwhelmed. So definitely recommend to join Mark throughout the journey in the Facebook group. So I'm going to add the link in the description. So make sure to check that out. Thank you so much, Mark, for that opportunity for our audience to join. Let them join your group. And pretty amazing stuff, Mark. We really enjoyed the conversation. Any last words before we conclude the whole podcast session? No, I really appreciate um, your time today, having me on your show. And uh, I've watched a few episodes, so really like your suits as well. They're really good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That, that's a great compliment, by the way, Mark. Really, really thank you so much for this amazing opportunity, Mark. Really enjoyed talking to you. And uh, that's really amazing, like the golden nuggets you have given. And hopefully people who are listening to this podcast, take notes, re-listen really again. There is an action plan in it on how you can take your business from point A to point B without getting information all over And make sure to join Mark's group. You'll definitely learn a lot of stuff. And Mark, thank you so much for amazing opportunity once again. And hopefully everyone watched this podcast, enjoyed the interview today. And we're excited to have you once again, once you have that X award. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Nikhil. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a, have a great day. Bye, Mark. Bye.